Everybody, let's go, let's go. Everybody, vamanos, vamanos. Everybody, let's go, let's go. Everybody, vamanos, vamanos. Is it a tit or quit the road to the golden boot? Boots. What's the titty, baby? Selena S. Titties here, and welcome to another episode of Tit or Quit, The Road to the Golden Boot. That's right, honey. We're here to look to see who's going to win the Golden Boot this season of RuPaul's Drag Race, season 16, and we are on episode five. Oh, my God. We're just moving along, but there's still so many bitches, so let's get moving, baby. Let's jump right in to this episode. But first, some housekeeping. Housekeeping! I got my feather duster, honey. Housekeeping, you know, I'm giving a little uh, Malaysia baby doll fox today, honey, the confessional look. Y'all know what's up. Now listen, voting ends February 22nd for the queer tees, baby. I want an award, bitch. And look, Lux called me out on Twitter because she saw my last video, bitch. So they're on to me, bitch. They're on to us, itty bitty, a city committee. So we gotta make sure we vote and put the pressure on, bitch, because the girls are coming for the titties, bitch. So click the link in my description below and vote for Selena S. Titties for future all-star. And um, I appreciate you if you do that every single day until February 22nd. Next, pre-save my single boots, baby. Yes, I have brand new music coming out, my first titty exclusive. I have a video coming out with my new single boots, so pre-save it. Uh, the link is also in my description below. Yes, honey, I'm giving you musica. I'm giving you music for your ears and for your titties, bitch. You're gonna wanna shake some ass and tira some culo, if you know what I mean, bitch. Let's go. Baby, let's jump right into the episode because we have no time to waste. There's still 12 or 13, bitch. I can't even count, bitch, but let's get it going. So the category this week is Pussycat Wigs, baby, on the runway. <laughs> First up, the top tit of the week. Oh, actually, something that I want to implement this week. I think it's so beautiful that homosexuals are such faggots. Like, it literally makes me so happy inside because... Only can a queer person come up with some of the bullshit that we say sometimes. I'm going to read the descriptions that the girls have for their runways. I'm going to read them because out of context, bitch, it's just insane what we homosexuals come up with. It's truly crazy. Like, no straight person could ever talk like the way these bitches are talking. I know even for my runways, bitch, when I was explaining my street lamp look or my, my little mermaid look, bitch, like, it is just so funny out of context. These little, like, two sentence elevator pitches that we give for these runways. So I'm gonna read them um, at the top of each tit or quit for each girl too. So get ready for that, bitch. Let's go into some line readings. The top tit of the week is Nymphia Wynn, baby. Yes, she is giving, she is living, and she is serving, bitch. We just live for Miss Nymphia. Now she have a 98% tit and a 2% quit. I checked the quits on who voted. It was like I can't even, it was like five people. I, I don't know what they're going through, bitch. I told you the itty bitty aesthetic community can be a little dizzy sometimes because this look, you have to admit, it was just so gorgeous. She was giving us culture. She's wearing the red, the red hat with a big fur, little danglies with the kimono type thing right in the front. It was just so beautiful. So this is what Nymphia had to say. I'm giving you the Trinity, a meow cat, a pussycat wig. Hold on a second. I have one more thing to reveal. Ooh, and then she had the pussy clitoris on the back of her head, bitch. I heard some review show saying, why was there a pussy on the back of her head? Bitch, why are you questioning her? Let the girl do her art. It was just, I live for it. I was kind of gagged that they showed the pussy on the head because if y'all remember Manila, like she had the tampon or the maxi pad with the blood and they wouldn't let her do it on Drag Race. So the fact that they let a full on vagina and they didn't blur it out or anything is just kind of like, sickening to me but i guess i don't know if times are changing if the the uh, exchange rate's going up or what the fuck have you but it's just uh i love that they show the pussy bitch it's more the fact that like they didn't blur it that i was like <gasps> wow so that was sickening bitch i thought nymphia ate as well she gave and it was sickening top tip of the week let's keep it pushing baby Ooh, time for say their names i understand <laughs> We have Miss Marsha three times. Yes, she voted Nymphia a tip this week, bitch. Work, Miss Marsha. Mar Mar now we have question. Question. Q has an 88% tip and a 12% quit, baby. Here's what Q had to say. Today, I'm giving badass warrior vampiric knight and a really sleek white pussycat wig an armor corset that is like cinching me for an inch of my life. This is detail, bitch. <laughs> This is detail, bitch. Come on. She's giving you Camelot. Uh, Rue said Miss Camel Toe, bitch. I was living for it. It was just a very clean, very, like, classic, like, 
drag look. You know, what's interesting to me is one time Gigi Good said, the way that she discovered her style of drag was she just did occupations. Very Barbie tees, right? Like Barbie in a different occupation and how can you make that fashion? Uh, Q is giving me that with this look. It's like, I'm gonna be a knight in shining armor, so how can I make that fashion? And bitch, she did. The fact that she made this herself, I love the detail in her, in her thigh. There's like a flap within a flap and the, as she walks, this flaps, but this stays up. I'm like, how did she get that to stay up? Like these little details, like she said, was just so beautiful. And the way that the cape in the back had the cutout for the butt, I thought was just mwah, delicious. But if we want to talk about pussycat wigs, honey, let's see this pussycat wig. She's blonde. It's the blood for me on the face, bitch. Come on, where's Manila's maxi pad when you need her, honey? <laughs> She's bleeding, bitch. Why is she bleeding from her eyes? Oh, what kind of fight is she in, bitch? She is, maybe she got into a fight with Maddie Morphosis, bitch. I think that's probably what happened. Because, you know, Maddie's out here chopping girls left and right. The straight man's coming for the gays, bitch. Be careful, Miss Maddie. Miss Maddie. So Q's giving. I think it's gorgeous sickening we can't really chop it bitch it's a tip for me let's keep it moving I understand. now we have miss robin fierce gave this a little tick come on miss bad bitchery for the knight of shining armor miss princess poppy gave this a tip this week and you know i can imagine um a series where like q is in this outfit slaying bitches and poppy would probably be the first goblin under the bridge that she goes and kills you know what i mean i would love to see that Okay, baby, we got Miss Morphine with an 87% tit and a 13% quit. Let's see what Miss Morphine had to say because hers specifically made me giggle so hard, bitch. She said, bitch, I did not come to play. I have a blood red pussycat wig with pussy little dangly beads. <laughs> she said with pussy little dangly beads. What's a pussy dangly bead, girl? With pussy little dangly beads hanging on the side like blood. <laughs> with pussy little dangly beads hanging on the side like blood. Come on, bitch. And then when I turn around, I have cat scratches on my ass. Girl, she's giving us cow woman with this structured giant like, do you remember? This reminds me of the Keith Haring Gottmik look with the red pants that billow outwards. Do you remember what I'm talking about? It's giving very that tease, which is super like artistic and avant-garde-ish, bitch. I'm here for it. It's giving Catwoman in a way we've never seen because usually we saw actually Maya Imam was wearing the Catwoman look in the mini challenge earlier in the episode. But this look, I think it's like a serve. It's Catwoman in a way we've never seen it before. Of course, the mug is giving. Miss Morphine always gives with the mug. And the cat scratches with the pussy... She said with the pussy dangling beads, bitch, the pussy dangling beads takes me out. I had pussy dangling beads once, you know? It, I remember it was the first time I was in love. You know, it's almost Valentine's Day. And I remember the first love I ever had was this guy named Chris, right? He went to a different high school than me. And I was, um, I was still in, I was a freshman in high school and he was like a, a junior, bitch. And Chris... Oh my God, he was trade bitch. He had the snapback, he had the air forces and the jeans bitch, and he just had swag and the necklace bitch. He, I'ma find a photo of him from back in the day, I'ma post it bitch, because he was my dream man. And I remember I was so in love with him. Roll with me bitch, I'm getting to the pussy dangling beads, because I remember we were all at, we were like, I had done a, sh my friend was in a show, so he went with me to go see my friend, cause it was a mutual friend, and we all went to Denny's afterwards, right? And mind you, I'm 16, I'm like 15 years old. I'm like 15 years old, I'm in the um, Denny's and I'm looking at him and we're rubbing knees underneath the table, right? And then um, he's like, okay, well, I got to go. And I'm like, what do you mean you got to go? Like, I thought that we were like vibing. Like, what are you talking about? And then he was like, no, my friend's picking me up outside. I was like, wait, you're going to leave me? And then he was like, yeah, I got to go. And I was like, wait, what if, um, what if you meet me in the bathroom? And then... Uh, he proceeded to meet me in the bathroom. So we were in the handicap stall, right? And so then um, I remember like we start making out and then I start sucking him off and bitch, I'm 15 years old. This is my first time like being super intimate. Maybe I'm 16. I'm like being super intimate, right? And like, I've never really like tasted a penis before. And this penis was like one of the largest penis I've ever seen in my life. Mind you, it's like the first one because it was my first time. And I was just like, in heaven, bitch. And I looked up at him and he's looking down at me and I'm like, oh my God, puppy. It was just so amazing. But then he turns me over and I'm like, oh fuck. Like I never done this before. And he wants to put it inside my culito, right? So I hold on to the, cause we're in the handicap stall. Well, bitch, I hold on to the handicap bar, bitch. It, I'm, it's like a good grip because I'm fucking nervous. That shit was so big, bitch. And then he just shoved it in. Ah! Pussy dangling beads, bitch. I had blood spewing out my booty hole. And it hurt so bad. But I took it, bitch, like a champ. But I was crying, bitch. I was like, why? 
it. But I was in love with him. He got a few pumps in, bitch. He, he did his thing and then he left. He left me alone in the bathroom stall. He gave me a kiss and then he left. And I was like, remember, I was just like laying on the floor in the handicapped stall with pussy dangling beads running down my booty hole. And um, he ghosted me after that. And that's why I think I have this like fetish of cruising in bathrooms. I think that's where it stems from, bitch. If you want to figure out any kind of uh, any kind of fetish you have, bitch, just go back to your first couple sexual experiences. That'll tell you why you are into what you're into, bitch. It is wild because you can find me in a handicap stall, bitch. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, let's get back on track. But Chris, I love you. Call me. Oh my god, it's so sad, y'all. It's so sad. I think my booty hole never recovered. Actually, maybe that's why I don't like bottoming too much, to be honest. It hurt, and I had so much love for... Okay, let's get into crazy. Let's move on, bitch. Say their names. Say their names. I understand. This week, Lux gave Morphine a Lux Noir tit. That's right. Now we have Saphir Cristal with an 82% tit and an 18% quit. Baby, let's see what Miss Saphira had to say. Saphira said, <clears throat> We ain't got no regular degular pussycat wig up in this house. This is actually a pussycat. I'm serving villain supreme realness, and I want $200,000. <laughs> yes, bitch, she gave us Dr. Evil, bitch. At first, I heard some people say like, oh, I saw the butthole in the pussycat wig, and it took me out right away. I did not see the butthole. I just thought it was a white pussycat wig, and I was like, okay, but it was the structure of this, and the way that they came across like this with the gown going up like this, you know what was weird to me? That was weird for me. Was, was when she was walking backwards like this down the runway. And she was like, I thought she was giving us Miss Frankenstein at first. Like, I don't know why she was walking so weird. But I think she was like trying to hide the pussycat detail maybe. Because the way she was walking out, she was like on a slant, bitch. I was like, okay, um, rake stage. I was like, okay. So, um... Then she put the little tail up, and then she took it off, and then it was the pussycat. I live, like I said, pussycat wig. My, my head goes straight to pussycat. I was so nervous when I was getting ready for Drag Race that, like, you know, we get a runway, like, say, um, it's this, like, struggle of wanting to think outside the box so you don't do what everyone else is doing. But then, are you, are you willing to take the risk to do, like, the obvious but risk other people doing the same thing. So it's such a gamble when you go to Drag Race because you don't want to be the girl who comes out in another kimono, right? We don't want kimono gate like the Madonna runway once again where everyone's wearing a kimono. They all think they're being outside the box, but then everyone's doing the same shit. Gamble, maybe every single girl's doing pussycat wig thinking they're doing something extra, you know what I mean? And Safira did it in a really sickening way with the Dr. Evil aspect, bitch. She was bald, she had the pinky, bitch, and I love Austin Powers. Most of my humor and where I get my humor from is from the Austin Power movies. Uh, a superstar with Miss Molly Shannon, bitch. Like, that. those stupid-ass movies is why I'm such an idiot. Like, so the fact that Safira did that and referenced Dr. Evil, I was here for it, bitch. I understand. We have Miss Britta Filter gave this a tit this week, bitch. Boots. Next up, we have Tsunami Muse with 78% tit and 22% quit. Yes, Miss Tsunami looks sickening, baby. This is what she had to say. Not every girl can look good in this hairstyle. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I look exquisite, giving you attitude and flirting with the judges. Wink, wink. Here I feel so in my element in this moment. <laughs> it's giving very much. She wasn't even talking about her outfit. <laughs> Usually you take that moment to talk about your outfit. But this bitch is just like, I look sickening, bitch. And I, the judges live for me, period, bitch. And she looks so cool. It was this very, like, uh, luchador, very chic, very, like, 90s model-esque type. It was just given super high fashion, like, runway model, bitch. And people were like, it's interesting to see how many quits she got. Like, people weren't really vibing with it. But I thought she looked so... Gorgeous. It's giving supermodel of the world, which RuPaul is our number one supermodel of the world. So these runways, in my mind, sometimes you want to give supermodel tees. You know what I mean? Like, I'm the campy bitch. Like, I give you craziness on stage, very emancipatory meeting status. But this is like, you know, what I feel we want to see sometimes, right? We want to see the fashion, the supermodel of it all. And I think she really served and she really gave that this week. So I'm here for it, Tsunami. Good job, bitch. Let's keep it pushing. Ooh, Joseph Shepard in the house. We have Joseph Shepard from Exposed Interviews. Y'all might have seen them on YouTube. Gave this a tit this week. Hi, Joseph. It, interesting story. Since we're talking about Valentine's Day and the guy who broke my heart, I remember before I was on Drag Race, I asked Joseph out on a date. <laughs> I 
slid in his DMs. I said, hey, you're kind of cute. Uh, you got a boyfriend? And then he was like, uh, actually, I, I am seeing someone, but we could be friends. And bitch, I left him on red. I was like, bitch, I don't want to be friends with you. I did not slide in your DMs to be your friend, bitch. Y'all know what that... Ah! And so it's like, actually, he was kind of very nice to respond that way because at least he was like, we can be friends. And I'm like, that's cute, but I don't want to be friends. <laughs> what about your friends? I got friends already, bitch. I want a man, you know? So anyways, I'm looking for a Valentine's, y'all. Hit me up. Slide in my DMs. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a man, bitch. So get that straight. Actually, but now me and Joseph are cool, bitch. I love that bitch. He's still so hot, though. I think he's single now. He's been working out. Oh, my God. Okay. Hi, Joseph. I don't know. You still with that man? I don't think he is. <laughs> okay, moving on. Next, we have Plasma with a 64% tit and a 36% quit. Let me read this bitch's description, bitch. I chose to do head to toe. My gay ass Hermes the Greek messenger goddess moment. <laughs> so I'm wearing my white pussycat wig with my gold feather details underneath my huge gold winged headphones. I want to give Hermes a bit of a Y2K feel. Bitch, this was wild to me. That was weird for me. <laughs> it was just so interesting, bitch. Like, there was a lot going on for me, low-key. Um, but I get what she was doing. It was, um... You know, I was surprised to see how many tits it got, but I guess it's like a cool look. If, yeah... Never mind, it's kind of cool, I guess. I think the wings took away from the pussycat wig a little bit. They're just kind of wild to me, but it is what it is. Why? You know, it's so interesting. These baby girl, not baby girls, these like children who are actually like really young, like these kids are probably like 23, 24, 25. Y2K to them is like an old thing. You know what I mean? Like Y2K is like a vintage idea to them, I feel. Where for me, like, bitch, I was a teenager during Y2K. So, like, that's just what I grew up with. It, but I'm getting old is what's happening here. I'm becoming old. I'm getting older. And the children here are like, oh, Y2K. It's such a vintage uh, reference that I'm doing this. Bitch, no, it's not. <laughs> like, uh, oh, my God. It's just so funny to me. It's just I'm getting fucking old. It's wild. I'm aging. I'm getting Botox today, actually. So, next video, I'm going to be a little smoother. Watch, bitch. <laughs> Um, what can I say about this look? Actually, I think it's cute. Like, the little mini dress kind of cute. I like, I always love when there's a dress and then there's this, like, sleeve thing on top. And that shows just a little bit of cleavage. I love that look. Safira had it. She has it here. I even think, um, Q question? I think Q had the same vibe, too, going on. So, like, I love that style. I think it's so hot. Uh, she looks good. It looks rich. Her face, I feel like, is getting better every episode, to be honest. Her makeup is giving tonight. I really like it. I didn't at first, but when you look at it, it's cute. At first glance, you're like, whoa! What in the pigeon tree is going on here? But it's giving, bitch. I, I'm here for it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's a lot of feathers going on in the sleeve, but what, who am I to talk? Look at me. <laughs> Chicken feathers. Chicken feathers, bitch. Okay, let's keep it pushing. <laughs> Our duck walking bitch, Anitra, gave us a tip this week. So if Anitra likes a bitch, shut, fuck my opinion. Up next, we have Plain Jane with a 60% tit and a 40% quit. Now she's given the latex bodysuit with the gas mask situation with the big titties, bitch. Let's see what she had to say about this. Wait, what? On top of my latex face kini is a little blonde platinum pussycat. The look is extremely latex fetish bimbo to the max. Work. That's all she had to say. No explanation about the gas mask, what she's smelling, what she's hiding from. What's the story here? I'm very interested to know. So she got a 40% quit, baby. We're moving downward. She got a C, C minus, 60%, C, 70. That's a D minus. Plain Jane got a D minus going on, honey. Um, I thought she looked really hot. Uh... I hate that we have to compare her to Jimbo sometimes. Like, I hate comparing queens to other queens, but it did remind me a little bit of Jimbo's, like, big-breasted bodysuits that she wears. And it's, like, it's not that Jimbo created that. It's just that Drag Race and Jimbo, that was the first look we got of this kind of style of, you know, titty bibs and stuff. So it's... It, I hate that it always goes back to Jimbo. <laughs> but um, I think Plain looks great. I think... I don't know if... The emphasis for this runway is, like, it's pussycat wig. So is the emphasis the pussycat wig? Like, should that be the main focus? And do you get points knocked off for it not being the main focus? You know what I mean? Because she could have worn any hair with this and the look still would have been what the look was because it's more about her look than it is about the pussycat wig. So that's kind of interesting, right, with these runways. Is it about the wig or is it about the outfit? Which one? When the category is pussycat wig. So what's a, what's a giving? What is it? You know what I mean? You know what's interesting? I hate that none of the girls did bus driver. 
I was hoping an elevated bus driver was one of the runways. That's maybe that's what I would have done. I don't know, but I thought that would have been sickening, bitch. Bus driver wig, bus driver. I mean, I don't know. This look is great. I don't. I think it's gorgeous. Uh, someone pointed out. I heard that the nude latex on the legs. Um, the fact that it's also latex and it's not just her legs is kind of sickening. I think the fish, the fetish gear here, is done uh so good so i can't knock it uh the 40 percent quits people out there hate playing but it is what it is let's see what the uh girls had to say this week <laughs> or mayari gave this a tit okay miss moon goddess she liked it now we have don with a 58 percent tit and a 42 percent quit let's see what she had to say this runway is alien girl goes to the mall <laughs> and it's all rhinestone it's all a lot and it's all very me my kitty cat wig is a bowl cut. From the front, it's not very kitty cat, but from the back, it definitely has that little kitty cat moment. <laughs> I love, so I love when you go to Drag Race and uh, the runway category is XYZ, but you go on the runway with ABC and you're like, how do I, how do I sell this shit? Because it's giving the, the prompt, but not really. So let me try to manipulate it to make it look like I'm giving the prompt. It was giving very X, Y, Z, A, B, C, bitch. I was living for her. She being like, it's not, yeah, it's not really kitty cat, bitch. But look, from the back, it, maybe it's a little bit of a kitty cat. I, I live for that. Now the outfit, like, I love this. It really reminded me of Jax's style for my season. Jax really loved the, like, funky prints, the, like, streetwear that's bedazzled in rhinestone. It's given the very, like, kindergarten color block, red, blue, and yellows, like, the very primary colors. Like, very, that always reminds me of Jax and her style, her looks. But this was giving that. And I will say, once again, if, a, if Megami wore this, it probably would have been a chop. But she's skinny and she's gorgeous, so it gave, and it gave funky, and it gave cool, and it gave something, you know, I really have to call out this tote bag, bitch, because this red hand situation, bitch, looked familiar. It looked very familiar. <laughs> but I'm just kidding, bitch. It's red gloves, bitch. I lived for it. When I saw the red glove, I was like, yes, Miss Mamas. But um, I thought the look was cool. I watched the construction of how it was made um, on her designer's Instagram story, and it was really cool. It's, it's all patchworky upcycling situation, which I really love on the runway and giving that. It gives very drag, bitch. Drag queens take shit from their house. I, just the other day, like, ripped up three pairs of, uh, three dresses so I can make one little look. And, like, that's what drag is. Like, we forget that. And it's not always gonna be custom couture, crazy Marco Marco Diego Montora vibes. Like, so I like that we're kind of getting a very nice variety with these girls, with the crazy outfits, and then the really like, bitch, we made this at home out of um, different looks. You know what I mean? Like, I love that we're playing with that, we're seeing it on the runway, and it's being celebrated in a way. Yes, it got more of on the quit side as we're moving down low. She got a 42% quit, so we're meeting the halfway mark, but I get it. I get it. maybe it's a little like pedestrian, but it's elevated pedestrian. So I don't know. I kind of, we live for it. It looks cool. But again, if it were on a bigger girl, we'd probably give it a chop. So keep that in mind, bitch. That's all I'm saying. Let's say, say their names. Say their names. <laughs> Speaking of, Jax gave this a quit. <laughs> what the fuck? That's so funny, right? I'm literally just talking about Jax and she's over here giving it a quit. So bitch, Fuck my drag. And Jack said, no, bitch, I elevated. <laughs> See, that's what happens after Drag Race, bitch. You look back at yourself, you're like, oh, maybe I should do this instead. So I don't know. Jax gave this a quit. That's fucking funny, bitch. I, what are the chances? I didn't even know that was going to happen. <laughs> Up next, we have Megami with 36% tit and a 64% quit. Now, the quits are outweighing the tits at this point. We're moving on down, baby. Let's see. Megami... <laughs> Let's see what Megami has to say. I'm literally just the Satin Island Fairy, and my little pussy cat wig is on backwards because I think it gives a little bit more of a punk edge. And this outfit is very sheer, and I spent a lot of money on these tattoos, so I'm gonna show all of them off. Ooh, I forget that tattoos cost money. <laughs> Paint Rag does all my tattoos. I'll put his little thing here. He's sickening. He's in Long Beach if you're in the area. But, um, you know, we work out a deal and it's not that expensive for me. So, like, I forget that girls spend a lot of money on tattoos. Like, Miss Lucy LaDuca. It's such a thing. You want to show them off, bitch. It's kind of sexy. So, I love that she's showing off her body. I was so confused. Is that her real butt or is that a... Uh... 
a pad that she has with a panty that she has underneath. I couldn't tell because it looks so beautiful and I and like I couldn't tell through the dress if it was padding or if it was her real butt. But if it was her real butt bitch, her body was giving. Y'all cannot clock this bitch. Her body was giving. This outfit is from Finesse, which is like a Fashion Nova or Sheen. I saw Megami posted that that's where she got the look from, and which to me is a little like, oh. Season two of Drag Race. We're giving Marshalls. We're giving off the rack type tees, which I never would have known had she not posted that. So had she, I wish she would have just lied and said, bitch, this is handmade couture. But she said it was from Finesse. And I did a commercial for Finesse uh, a couple months ago. Yes, bitch. Boo. So I know exactly what she was talking about. So I was like, oh, interesting. Um, I don't know. This look. There's something about Megami's walk, I think, that turns me off. She doesn't walk sexy on the runway. She, she walks like, kind of like a Staten Island fairy. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but like, it's just a little clunky when she walks. I think if she had more grace um, with her movement, I think we'd uh, digest it a little nicer. But um, I can see why people want to give this a quit. But also, if your fave skinny bitch wore this, again, I will always bring it back to that because there is such a difference. I hate to keep bragging on it, but it's just what it is. Like, we are just so conditioned to, uh, you know, I feel like in America that the skinny model less type is what beauty is. Like, the beauty standards are just so, like, ingrained in us that we see a big body girl like Megami. And she's not even, like, she's not, she's not, like, overly obese or anything. Like, she's a beautifully thick woman. Like, it's just, like, we are conditioned to think, oh, it's a chop right away. But I hate that that's a thing, but we, I think even having this conversation is very healthy and it helps us start to look at things different. So like, that's the only reason why I bring it up because you know, I'm thicker too. And I have a lot of insecurities around my thickness out of drag as a boy. In drag, I own it. In drag, I love that I'm thick. I think if I got too skinny in drag, my drag wouldn't necessarily be what it is. I think being thick is part of my brand. It's part of who I am as Selena's titty. So I embrace it in drag. That's why I love my drag. It allows me to embrace the parts of me that I hate as a boy. Because when I'm out of drag, bitch, I hate looking at my body. I don't like looking at this thing here and this little thing. But when I'm in drag, bitch, I'm like, Come on, bitch, get, come here, daddy, come taste all my little rolls, all my little back rolls. I love it. So it's so interesting, right? So I say all of this just to like help remind myself that I'm beautiful, help remind you, bitch, that you're beautiful regardless of what your body looks like and whatever the beauty standards are, bitch, it's beautiful. And so with this said, Megami, I think she looks good, uh, but I don't think she sold it very nicely on the runway. Like, uh, like it just uh, is a little cringe, like. <laughs> Her little, like, her little antics that she did. Um, so I think for that, uh, we're getting down to the quits. We have Meatball in the house, gave this a tit. You see what I mean? Because I think Meatball would wear this and, like, stun in it. I think she would have a bigger wig. I think that's what this outfit was actually kind of missing. Maybe the pussycat wig wasn't complimenting how small the outfit was. Or maybe I was just talking about, like, is it about the pussycat wig or the outfit? The outfit lend itself to allow the pussycat wig to really shine for this look. So maybe she had a point with going a little sheer and, you know, um, toned down with this runway. I don't know, but Meatball gave this a tip, bitch, so fuck my drag. Up next, we have Miss Maya with a 33% tit and a 67% quit. This is what Maya had to say. My wig is giving you Mary J. Blige. It's giving you mushroom. <laughs> It's giving you mushroom, bitch. Okay. Okay. It's giving you mushroom shortcut. Chop, 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 chop. Uh, and because my shortcut is small, I'm giving you shoulders pointed to the gods. <laughs> okay. Because her shortcut is small, she's giving you shoulders pointed to the gods. She has these giant pointy shoulders. And someone pointed out at a viewing party that I was at that she wears a lot of black. She had the green runway when she did the significant mother and she had the um, the yellow feathers for that the feather look that she did, her signature drag. Doesn't stand out, you know what I mean? So it's interesting that we keep seeing black on Maya. Um, this pussycat wig is cut, it's very bus driver. Like I said, I think she should have been a bus driver, bitch. That would have been so cut. But it's just, it's just a drag look. You would see this outfit at any drag brunch you go to in 
any corner of the world, there's a drag queen who has this look with the pointy shoulders, the little skirt. It's not really giving anything exciting. There's no actual story to this outfit or how she's selling it or walking it. So I think for that reason, it's giving quit, bitch, but I don't think it's golden boot worthy as we move into the, we're here to we're here to look for the golden boot. I, for, I forget that. So far, none of these looks I think are giving golden boot worthy. Um, let's, so let's keep it pushing to say their names. <laughs> Princess Poppy gave this a quit. Ooh, but Foxy Doll gave this a tit. That's her Miami sister, honey. I feel some bias happening here. <laughs> Up next, we have a me Bitch, I smell a golden boot. <laughs> I smell a golden boot in our midst. We have a mandatory meeting, bitch, with a 28% tit and a 72% quit. Actually, she didn't have the most quits this week, so that's actually very interesting, bitch. So people actually did like this look. I love... I let, Let's see what this bitch had to say. Let, let's see what this bitch had to say. My kitty cat wig is the top of my robin's egg. What, bitch? <laughs> my kitty cat wig is the top of my robin's egg, which is also the top of my head. The, my kitty cat wig is the top of a robin's... My kitty cat wig is the top of my robin's egg, which is also the top of my head. She really thought she ate with that. That's so sickening. Uh, just hatching through to reveal my gorgeous eyes. Wink sound effect. I want to incorporate the pussycat wig in an unexpected way. Well, bitch, this was unexpected because what the fuck? What the fuck, bitch? What in the big bird is happening here? I ain't never seen no giant egg like this. The way, I, I love it though, I love it. It's giving very much my street lamp look. It's giving very much La La Ree bag look. You really walk on stage, think you're giving something, bitch, and you're the most creative bitch on stage. And it's just a laughable situation. It's just so insane. I love it. Cause if this were any other runway, take the eggs out, this nest situation, the, the structure of this, the way that it goes down like that on the dress is actually really cunt. It's really, really cool. So that is really sickening, but it was these heads with the eggs and the blue, and then the hatch, and the makeup. The makeup was actually really cool. For some, for a queen who was getting so red on her makeup the first episode, bitch, the fact that she was able to do all this is sickening. I did like the creativity of the pussycat wig being the hatching of the egg. Like, that is creative. That's using the pussycat wig in a way that is different from any of the other girls. So I really did enjoy that aspect. Um, of course, this look is insane. This look is crazy. This look will go down in history as one of the wildest looks on the runway, bitch. It's so good. It's so golden boot worthy. I think we have one of our top contenders for the golden boot so far in this series, bitch. I really feel like this is, uh, if we're gonna see how the rest of the season shakes out, but this so far is giving mwah, perfect prime example of golden boot worthy, bitch. I live. Ooh, we have my sister G is for Godoy. She's a designer. She makes a lot of looks for a lot of queens on the show. Your faves like Bianca, Naomi Smalls, uh, Monet, Kim Chi. Godoy is such a talented drag queen as well, bitch. Keep an eye out for her. Go follow her. G is for Godoy. She voted this a quit. Now she is, uh, you know, she's a designer, so she knows fashion, bitch. And she said that this was not fashion. <laughs> Bitch, I would have said this is fashion because I could see, I've seen this look on a runway before, on a couture runway. There is a look that has, I'm gonna look for the photo. There's a look that has like this that's been on couture runways before, bitch. So I do not knock it. I think fashion even can be subject, subjective. It's art at the end of the day. So I don't know. I don't know. But definitely golden boot worthy. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha gave this a tip, bitch. Come on, Miss Marsha. She's she's here for the girls. She's here for the art and the creativity. I saw a tweet that said, can't we just have fun anymore? Y'all y'all hate these campy looks. Like, why can't drag just be fun? And this is giving fun. This is giving creativity. So I am here for it. It's very street lamp look, bitch. So I love this. I love that Amanda went there. Her mind is going to create beautiful shit in this world. So I'm excited to see what Amanda does out in the world after Drag Race. Let's keep it pushing. Now we have Geneva Carr. I just need a moment of silence, bitch, because this outfit needs to die. So she has a 27% tit and a 73% quit. Here's what she had to say. I'm giving you 1920s slapper girl. My pussycat wig is a finger wave short. <laughs> My pussycat wig is a finger wave short. Very like retro, very elegant. You know, I wanted to show it's not all big Texas hair. Bitch, what about 
the Lisa Frank leopard print going on? What about that 1920s flapper girl? I was so gagged that she wore this. It was interesting, but I get it. You go to Drag Race, what am I gonna do? How do I make it me? I don't know, bitch, but it was just wild to me. And again, the outfit, the pussycat wig is fine. The outfit, whoo, right? So it's just, uh, that's no surprise that the bottom quit. I do not think this golden boot worthy. It's not exciting to me enough. It's just kind of very like, ugh. You know what I mean? It's very that. Again, you would probably see a girl wear this at any uh, drag brunch, but probably not in this wig. So it is what it is. Uh, I don't think there's a lot to say here. I don't want to read the girl too hard. Uh, she knows what... But it did get some tits. But I will say, not from any of the Drag Race girls. Every single Drag Race alumni that voted on Titter Quit this week gave this a quit. <laughs> it's a consensus, bitch. All the queens said, no, man. Sorry, Lisa Franklis. So that was Titter Quit this week, honey. I definitely feel like the only golden boot worthy look this runway was has to be a mandatory meetings little egg nest look. I don't know if y'all looked up. There's an egg nest emoji on iPhones, and it's literally her look. I was kind of gagged. <laughs> Amanda, you're in the running for the golden boot twice this series so far. First runway, the alien look, this runway, and then I can't even remember the other looks, bitch. We have Hershey Liqueur's Mother Earth look, and then we have Plasma's Twiddle D Tweedle Dum. So we have really good contenders for the golden boot so far. I'm very excited to award it at the end of this series, bitch. Who's gonna take it? I hope there's more wild looks to come. But here, let's cut to the golden chunkla. Now it's time for the golden chunkla. chunkla. This week we had question and a mandatory meeting in the bottom, bitch. If y'all looked at Amanda like without the giant nest and the other egg heads, like the outfit's kind of cute, bitch. I don't know. I really feel like Amanda ate Q up in this lip sync, but it was giving very much Rue wanted to see more of what Q had in store rather than seeing what Amanda had in store. You know, uh... I don't think the Golden Chunkla is going to anyone so far on this season. These lip sync for your lives have not been giving, bitch. They have not been gag worthy. They have not been sickening to me. A girl does a split and the guest judge goes crazy. But I was at a viewing party at a bar this week in Culver City and everyone was just like, there was two drunk white girls in the corner who went, oh my God, but bitch, shut the fuck up. No, we're tired of the random splits coming out of nowhere, bitch. This lip sync did not give. I didn't know what the fuck song this is. Who are these guest judges? Why are these judges? Ah! Why? What was the challenge? The challenge was, the challenge this week was girl group. Oh, they're a girl group. But bitch, we don't fuck, I kind of pop. I'm sorry, bitch. I don't know who the fuck they are. I'm so excited to see La Roach next episode. She's going to give us pure, delicious commentary that is warranted and coming from somewhere um, that's from a place of yes. You know what I mean? Like, they know what the fuck they're talking about. So I'm very excited to see La Roach. I'm very excited to see how he reacts to the lip sync, bitch. Because, you know, he's from Legendary, bitch. He sits there. He will give a resting bitch face if it's not giving. So I'm very excited to see who lip syncs next week and get a very authentic reaction from the judges that uh, Grant, you know, that's warranted. I hate when the judges are just like, whoa, because they did a split, bitch. This is not exciting. Give us some good lip syncs, bitch. Let's go. At least these bitches are knocking off one by one by one. And the golden chunk left stands. It's not going to anyone so far. And I also asked you guys on Instagram, should the golden chunk go to the lip sync assassin or should it go to the best lip syncer? Which, is that the same thing? Or is there a best lip sync that deserves the golden chunkla? Maybe the best lip sync of the season, both of them get a golden chunkla if they're both sickening? Because there's two, there's a right and a left chunkla. Or is it going to the lip sync assassin? Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna leave it up to you guys because I don't really give a fuck. So if y'all think it should go to the lip sync assassin, I'll give the golden chunkla to them. If it should go to the best lip sync of the season, that's different than the lip sync assassin because the lip sync assassin could be someone who's really good, but maybe then have the best lip sync of the season, right? So up to, I'll leave it up to you guys. Let me know in the comments if it should go to the lip sync assassin or the best lip sync of the season to whoever that queen would be. Maybe it's the same person, so it may not even matter. But I want to leave it up to you guys. This is for y'all at the end of the day. Y'all are making the golden boot happen. Y'all are making the golden chocolate happen. It's on y'all. I'm just the messenger, bitch. Cupid. Ping! With that said, I'm looking for a Valentine, bitch. I'm a verse top. Uh, I, uh, I'm i on prep. I'm negative. And I'm on doxy prep as well, bitch. So let's do all the things. Uh, I am very 
good listener. I'm a very good cuddler. I'm more, I'm more like to be a little spoon, so I like someone bigger than me, but I can be a big spoon if you need it. I do like little guys if I am topping you, but if you are bigger than me, bitch, I will let you top me, bitch, period. So um, not that Valentine's all about sex because I do like chocolate and I like pasta. So like, go ahead and uh, DM me, bitch. I'm looking for a Valentine. It's coming up soon. And then my single boots comes out directly after Valentine's Day. I'm so excited to share with you guys. Maybe she'll give you a little sneak peek. Should I give you a little sneak peek? All right, sneak peek exclusive right here, only on my Titter Quit, bitch. Here's a little preview of my music video boots. When my video comes out, I need y'all to share it with every single person because I need this to be the biggest moment ever. You feel me? So go ahead, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see when my video comes out. Um, if I get to 20,000 subscribers, bitch, I will uh, share some Drag Race tea y'all haven't heard of before. If I get 50,000 subscribers, I will wear the metallic runway that I got the golden boot for. So go ahead and subscribe, bitch. Send it to a friend to subscribe as well. Uh, thank you for joining me for Titter Quit. I really feel like the golden boot might go to Amanda for this egg look, but we're gonna see at the end of the series who's gonna get it. So thanks for joining me for Titter Quit, the road to the golden boot. I love you guys so much, and I will see you next week, bitch. Boots.